So now we're going to take a look at the mechanisms for the aldol reactions, and we'll start with the base catalyzed mechanism, the easier of the two. And uh, the first step is simply going to be deprotonation of the alpha carbon, forming your enolate ion here. So in this case, I'm going to try and keep the color scheme here so we can kind of keep track of who's the nucleophile and who's the electrophile since they're both derived from the same molecule here, acetone in this case. So, and I won't be lazy, I'm going to draw both resonant structures for our enolate. Cool. He's going to be our nucleophile. So, and in this next step here, we are going to have him reacting with another molecule of the original ketone. So if you recall, hydroxide is not a strong enough base to deprotonate our ketone 100%. Uh, it might only deprotonate one out of, you know, a uh, thousand or even a million molecules or something like this. And so in this case, for every one of these enolates that we formed, we've got a whole bunch of these original ketones that are completely unreacted. And so at the same time, we're going to have both a nucleophile, the enolates, so, and the original ketones, the electrophile, in the solution at the same time. And that's why they're able to react with each other. And so in this case, we'll just drop these electrons down and we'll come and do nucleophilic attack here, kicking those up. And in this case, we will then end up with... There's our new bond we just formed, and we formed it with the alpha carbon right here. So from here, we're just simply going to go through and do a protonation. If you notice, in this step, we also formed a water molecule. So in that first step, when hydroxide came and deprotonated the alpha carbon, and now we're going to use that water molecule simply to protonate here. There's again the new bond we formed with our alpha carbon. And again, this is our aldol addition product, and that's as far as I want to take this uh, on this slide. Uh, but in this case, uh, the next slide will go over how we get to this aldol condensation product. Uh, and again, there's two pathways, one with acid and one with base. So on this slide, I just want to take a look at the condensation mechanism, so that elimination reaction we're going to do. And uh, the acid catalyzed one is definitely something you're going to be more familiar with. And in this case, the OH needs to leave, and we also need to lose an H off the alpha carbon. And uh, you should already know that an OH is a bad leaving group. But if we protonate it here with whatever our acid is, we can make it a good leaving group. And that's where we're headed here. And as has been the pattern, uh, the moment you make something a good leaving group, in all likelihood, it is leaving in the next step. And that is definitely what's happening here. So that water is now going to leave. Leaving us with a carbocation. So and from here, we just need to deprotonate one of these. And we're going to do that with the water molecule we just formed. So technically, we could also use the conjugate base of whatever our acid is here as well. Cool, and that's the second step of our elimination. So if you look, this is very reminiscent of E1 elimination. So leaving group leaves, forming a carbocation, and then you deprotonate. Now, in this case, we formed an alkene. In this case, he, uh, there's no such thing as E or Z for this thing. But uh, if it mattered, whichever was less sterically hindered would be the major. But in this case, it's equivalent either way. Uh, but that's the acid catalyzed mechanism, three steps here. The base catalyzed, though, is going to look a little less familiar. And with the base catalyzed mechanism, so you don't actually get to form a good leaving group. You're actually going to have this OH function as a leaving group to be kind of strange and, and very unique. So, but the first step is you just deprotonate the alpha carbon, forming an enolate. And here I am going to be lazy. I'm not going to draw both resonant structures of this particular enolate. So, but that's the first step. Notice we also formed a water molecule in the process. Keep everything balanced. So, and it turns out, yeah, we got two resonant structures here, but this thing now is just going to eliminate. And it turns out you can't protonate the OH. That only happens in acid, and we don't have acid. We're in a highly basic solution here. So in this case, we're actually going to drop these electrons in to form the pi bond and kick off the OH. And it turns out it does happen in two steps like we're drawing it here. And this is one of those weird things where the OH is actually going to function as a leaving group. It's not a great leaving group at all here. 
but it's going to happen. And the big thing that's governing this, or at least allowing it to happen, is the fact that we're forming a conjugated product here. Notice double, single, double. And that conjugated product means it's lower energy, and this step right here happens to be very exothermic, and that's the driving force in this reaction that allows OH to actually leave. Uh, if we weren't forming such a stable product, you definitely wouldn't have an OH leaving group leaving. So that's kind of the deal. That's the uh, condensation step, both acid catalyzed and base catalyzed. Uh, and it could happen either way. You're responsible in all likelihood for both mechanisms. Now we're going to take a look at the acid catalyzed mechanism for the aldol reaction. And we're just going to look at it for this first step. The second step that can be done with acid or base is exactly the same as what we've already covered. So, uh, so just this first step going to the aldol addition reaction is where we're going to go. And uh, in this case, the first thing you got to do is form your nucleophile. And that's going to form in a tautomerization reaction. And I'm actually going to show that forming in our tautomerization. And tautomerization is just two steps. As you might recall, and under acid catalyzed condition, the first step is a protonation. So that's what we'll do first. So, and then you want to deprotonate. So I'm going to draw in one of those alpha hydrogens. So in this case, we also formed the conjugate base here, TSO minus. So, and that's what's actually going to act as our base here and come in and pull off one of our hydrogens. And that gets us to our enol here. And technically this should be all equilibrium. Cool, and now we've got our nucleophile. <coughs> but this can be a little bit strange as we're gonna have to show where our electrophile comes from because it's not the original ketone. We actually need to show it forming as well. So one of the ways we often show this is kind of have two arrows converging here. So we're gonna have another one of our ketones getting protonated here. So, and that enters in right here. Cool, and it's the enol that actually attacks this protonated ketone, which again is a much better electrophile. And I mentioned this earlier, but the enol is not a good enough nucleophile to react with a ketone by itself, but protonate that ketone, make it much more reactive as an electrophile, and now the enol can come in and react. I'm kind of drawing this backwards here from what's listed above, but it is the same thing here. So that gets us here. And the only thing we need to do is deprotonate this hydrogen right here. And again, the TSO minus we just formed in the previous step is going to come back and do that as well. Whatever conjugate base we have. Uh, and so in this case, we'll come and deprotonate. Cool, and there's our aldol addition product under the acid catalyzed mechanism.